welcome into the Sports Buffoons Podcast. Welcome back into the Sports Buffoon Studios here in Kansas City. I'm your boy, JG, and it's good to be back with you guys. Thank you all for joining. Uh, we got a great show for you guys today. We're going to talk about the divisional round coming up in the NFL playoffs. That kicks off today at 3.35 p.m. with the Rams playing at the Green Bay Packers. And I will give you a breakdown of all of the games and also my predictions very shortly. But first of all, we got to start about start talking about this uh, James Harden trade that just went down on Wednesday. Uh, unfortunately, I was not able to be with you guys on Wednesday with the crew uh, here at Sports Buffoons. So we're going to talk about that right now. Uh, basically, breaking it down, Houston... Uh, got Victor Oladipo. Uh, I think that was a great deal for them because Oladipo is a great scorer and also a good three-point shooter. They also got Dante Exum, who's a, a good defender. And the Rockets got a ton of uh, draft picks here, guys, So and some pick swaps. So I think it was a great team for Houston. Um, looking at the other teams that were involved, so we had this was a four-team trade. So a big blockbuster trade. Uh, the Pacers were involved. They got Karis Levert, who I believe has a lot of all-star potential. He's a, a young guy that I think could definitely be a, an all-star moving forward. Cavaliers got involved. Uh, they received Jarrett Allen, who is a great young big man in this league. Uh, he's a great rebounder and rim protector. And the Cavs also got Torian Prince. And as we all know, the Brooklyn Nets got the one and only James Harden. Now, I talked about this when I did my preseason rankings for the NBA just a few weeks back. And I told you guys that uh, I had the Nets probably about right in the range of my, my fifth or my sixth best team in the NBA. And that was in the preseason. And so I also said in the preseason that it was going to be a boring NBA season unless James Harden went to the Nets. I did not want to see him really on any other team. I said that if he went to the Sixers, yeah, that would be interesting, but it wasn't going to really make them a contender. And, I, and so I said on that show, I said, the only way we have an interesting season this year is if James Harden goes to the Nets. Otherwise, it was going to be a runaway for the LA Lakers. And so that is not the case anymore, guys. So um, I do want to give you my final four prediction. Uh, as we move forward here, I see the final four, and I'm kind of jumping the gun here, but I'm going to go ahead and give you my final four in the NBA. I've got the Nets, Bucks, Clippers, and Lakers. And so a couple questions here uh, for the Nets. What do I think about their roster? And the other question is, how do they stack up to the L.A. Lakers? Well, I love the fact that they were able to keep Joe Harris. Uh, the Nets were able to keep Joe Harris, who is a, a really great three-point shooter. He shoots the three ball at 43% for his career. And I also like the fact that they were able to keep DeAndre Jordan now. He is 32 years old, but I, I still think that DeAndre Jordan has a lot left in the tank, even though he's not quite as good as he, he was uh, a couple of years ago. Um, but I, I just like the fact that they didn't have to give up the farm. And that was my point in the preseason. I, I thought there's no way that the Nets would be able to pull off a trade like this because I thought that they would have to give up the entire farm and draft picks all over the place, which they did. They gave up tons of draft picks, but uh, I was just happy that they were able to keep uh, some sort of a roster rather than just giving everything away. So um, looking at the Nets, the way I see it right now, guys, 
This is basically almost the same big three that we saw play for Oklahoma City in 2012. The difference is, you know, obviously OKC back in 2012, they had Harden, Durant, and Westbrook. So the only difference here is that you have Kyrie Irving instead of Russell Westbrook. Well, when I look at Kyrie Irving, I call him, I like to call him a rich man's Russell Westbrook if he's healthy. Because when Kyrie's healthy, he can obviously shoot the ball much better than Russell Westbrook. He's a big time scorer. And the other thing that he has that Russell Westbrook does not have is that championship pedigree. And so to me, uh, the 2012 Oklahoma City Thunder big three, yeah, that was a great team. Probably should have won the finals that year, but they ran into LeBron James and the Miami Heat, so they didn't get it done. But when I look at this big three of the Nets, I feel like they are the 2012 Oklahoma City big three on steroids. And so you look back at that 2012 Thunder team, James Harden only put up 17 points per game. And the very next year when he went to Houston, that went up to 26 points per game. And in 2019, as we all know, he averaged 36 points per game. So was there a big change in Harden's game between 2012 and 2013 when he went to Houston? No, he, he didn't improve that much. Um, it's all about his usage rate. So 2012, Harden was playing with Westbrook and Durant. That's the only reason why he was only averaging 17 points per game. So when you go from 2012 to his 2013 season with Houston, a lot of people think, oh, he got so much better in 2013. No, he really didn't. His usage rate went up. So that was the big difference there. Uh, my biggest question for the uh, the Nets right now is, is Kyrie Irving going to stay healthy? And is he going to play? Is he going to join the team soon? Well, Adrian Wojnarowski of ESPN reported that Kyrie Irving is actually going to play in tonight's game against Orlando as long as he clears the COVID-19 protocol. So a lot of people were worried about that because Kyrie Irving has been out for a while and there have been uh, there's been a lot of speculation as to why he hasn't been playing because he's not really injured. But I think it might have had something to do with uh, things that were going on in politics, why he was sitting out. And so at any rate, uh, Woj did report that he believes that Kyrie will play in this game tonight. But I just, I love this trade for the New Jersey Nets because it makes for an intriguing NBA season. And as I said before, I mean, guys, this was going to be a boring year. The Lakers were going to run away with this thing, in my opinion, if the Nets didn't make that trade for James Harden. So next question is, how do they stack up against the LA Lakers. Well, I mean, if you just had uh, Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving um, before the trade and they, they could have kept all these other players, I mean, I think they could have given the Lakers a run for their money, but there's no way that they would have won the NBA Finals. So now I think these two teams are even. I mean, I think if those two teams were to play right now in an NBA Finals series, I mean, you could probably fi flip a coin now that they've got James Harden. Uh, the other question I have is, so how do they stack up against the Lakers, and will we see these two teams in the NBA Finals? So, yes, I'm making that prediction right now. You will see these two teams in the NBA Finals. It's going to happen without a doubt you know, barring any significant injuries. And when I compare these two teams, um, I think the Lakers have the overall better roster, which is very important because 
they've got a lot better depth than the Nets. So you look at their bench, their starting lineup top to bottom. Uh, I, I think the Lakers have a deeper bench and a better roster, but the Nets have more overall talent. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's just break it down here. You look at the Lakers roster. Let's just start from the top. You got LeBron, AD, KCP. You've got Caruso, Marc Gasol, Montrez Harrell, Taylor Horton Tucker, Kuzma, Wes Matthews, Dennis Schroeder, Markeith Morris. And so what you have there is 11 rotational players. That is a little bit rare in the NBA. Most of these teams don't have 11 rotational players. And so if you're just looking at depth, the Lakers have a huge advantage in the playoffs. And if you're talking about like a, an NBA final series against the Nets. Now, the Nets do not have that. They don't have anything close to that. But what they do have is the fact that they can throw the best five players onto the court at any given time. So the Nets' best five players are better than the, the Lakers' best five players. So if you put the best five players on the floor for both teams, then the Nets have the advantage. And you can even take it down a level from there. You could say, let's take it down to the best three on each team. Okay, well, you got... Harden, Durant, Kyrie Irving, and then on the other side, you got LeBron AD. So who do we think is the third best player on the Lakers? Well, right now, if you're just looking at stats, it's Montrez Harrell. So like we said, the Lakers have the best roster, but the Nets can throw the best five players or the best three players on the court at any given moment. So who's going to win this finals matchup, guys, if we see this? Well, in a perfect world where you have no injuries, which almost never happens, I'm taking the Brooklyn Nets all day long because, as I said earlier, they have the best three players, and I do believe that they have the best starting lineup if those teams were to match up right now. However, if I had to give my official prediction – I have to take the Lakers, and it's not because of championship pedigree, because as we all know, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, those guys have won championships. James Harden has been to the finals. So it's not, not due to a lack of championship pedigree that I would pick the Lakers here officially, but it's just because of their overall depth. And so if you do see some injuries in the regular season or even in the playoffs, I give the Lakers the advantage here. And then you also have to compare the injury history to both teams. So, you know, when Anthony Davis first came to the league, I mean, those first couple years, we kind of thought of Anthony Davis as a guy who gets injured a lot. And that's true. He, he has been banged up over the course of these last few years. But when we looked it up here, um, he actually averaged 67 games per season. So he actually does play 67 games per season out of 82 games. So on average, even though he does get banged up here and there, he's only missing 15 games per season, which I can tell you right now, that's – you know, that's not as many games as Kawhi Leonard misses each year. And Kawhi Leonard, as we know, is a two-time champion. So, yeah, when you look at AD's injury history, I'm not, I don't have a lot of concern there. But when we look at it on the other side, you know, obviously we have Kevin Durant's injury history. He had a catastrophic injury uh, when he was on the Warriors. And... We know with Kyrie Irving, that guy is always banged up. So that's the reason. If I had to make a prediction right now, I would still say that the Lakers would win the championship only because of their depth and the fact that we don't have as much concern with their injury history the way that we do with the Brooklyn Nets. 
So I do believe I do believe that the Lakers will win the championship if they match up with the Nets. However, if we're sitting here a few months from now and we're having this same discussion with a fully healthy Brooklyn Nets team going into the finals, then I can tell you right now you're going to get a very different prediction from me. But I, I can't wait to see, the, see this series. I mean, I, I hope that we get the Nets versus the Lakers because, uh, in my opinion, this is definitely – these are definitely the two – most talented teams and the two best teams in the league at this time. And just to be clear, guys, I'm not sleeping on the Bucks and the Clippers. Those two teams are going to hang around. They're going to be there at the end. And we've got to see how the regular season plays out. I mean, I think the Bucks and Clippers could both have a great year. But I'm just giving you my two best teams as of right now. And I, that's, that's what I'm hoping for. That's what we always hope for is for the, the two best teams to always meet in the finals. And so for right now, it's definitely got to be the Lakers and the Brooklyn Nets. So hit me up on Twitter, guys. Let me know your thoughts on that. If you agree or disagree with me, you can hit me up on Twitter at Sports Buffoons. Uh, let me know if you think I'm just uh, making these predictions a little bit too early or if you think there might be another team that I haven't even mentioned that you think is going to step up in the playoffs during crunch time and uh, maybe make a move to try to make the NBA Finals. So moving on, we got to talk about some NFL playoffs. That is kicking off at 3.35 p.m. Central today. We've got the Rams at the Green Bay Packers. And Packers are uh, minus six and a half favorite in this game. And as I stated earlier, I was not able to join the crew on the Sports Buffoons this past Wednesday, um, but I know those guys made their picks. I know what those picks were. They basically picked all of the favorites, basically all four of these playoff games in the divisional round. They picked all four favorites to win. So, um, I am now going to give you my predictions, and uh, let's see what happens. Starting off with the Rams at Green Bay. You know how I do it on this show, guys. We always talk about defense first because defense wins championships. I'm looking at this Rams defense. They are the number one defense in the NFL. They give up 282 yards per game, and they are also number one in the NFL in points allowed at 18 and a half points per game. Only gave up 20 points to the Seattle Seahawks last week. And that Seattle offense was a pretty good offense. I mean, they were number eight in the NFL. So Seattle was putting up 29 points per game. So that was a pretty impressive win for the Rams. And so you look at the Green Bay Packers here they actually have the number one offense in the NFL at 31.8 points per game. And they give up 23 points per game on defense. That's number 13th. That's number 13 in the league. Not too bad. Uh, I'm looking at a game time temperature of 35 degrees, nine mile an hour winds. So when you're talking about the city of Green Bay, that's actually really good weather. So weather should not be a factor in this game. And... So we're looking at Green Bay. They're playing at home. They should easily win this game, right? Well, let's break it down. The biggest question for me is, is Aaron Donald healthy? We all know he's going to play, but is he healthy? Well, there was a report from the NFL Network, and Aaron Donald was quoted as saying, I have no pain, and I feel healthy. So my prediction is that Aaron Donald is going to destroy Aaron Rodgers in this game. And I also look at a guy by the name of Jalen Ramsey. He's not going to shut Devontae Adams down, right? Nobody's going to shut down Devontae Adams. But Jalen Ramsey has the skill set that will be able to slow down Devontae Adams. So my official prediction, guys, I've got 24 to 21 Rams. And Green Bay... 
I mean, even if you think that Green Bay is going to pull off this win, there's no way they're going to cover that six and a half points. So if you're going to bet on this game, I'm taking the Rams all the way. Final score, 24-21 Rams. That is another upset. I actually picked the Rams to win last week, um, and everybody thought they were going to lose. So we'll see what happens this time around. Next game, kicking off at 7.15 p.m. Central. You've got the Ravens at the Buffalo Bills. Bills are favored. Minus two and a half in this game. Uh, game time temperature, 30, 35 degrees. There's no precipitation in the forecast. So, again, that's very good weather for the city of Buffalo. And a lot of people are picking Buffalo to win this game. And I've got a lot of issues with that. Number one, Buffalo gives up 23 points per game. That is only the 16th best in the NFL. So their defense is mediocre, I would say, at best. Whereas Baltimore has the number two defense in the NFL, only giving up 18.9 points per game. So that's an issue for me. An even bigger issue is that I just don't trust that rushing defense specifically. The run defense of Buffalo is giving up 120 yards per game on the ground. So guess who has the best rushing offense in the NFL? That just so happens to be the Baltimore Ravens. They put up 192 yards per game on the ground. So you've got the best rush offense in the league against a rush defense that is not very good. That is a huge problem in this game for those of you who think that Buffalo is going to pull this win out. Uh, and people say, well, who cares? Because Buffalo has the second best offense in the NFL, and that's true. So they're putting up 31.3 points per game. But that means nothing to me because the Ravens are number seven in the league. So they're putting up 29 points per game. So, I mean, offensively, you're talking about a, a two points per game difference. So that there, there's not a whole lot of difference there. And the thing about Baltimore is that even though they're number seven in the league offensively, they don't need to score that many points because they like to melt the clock with their running game. And so the Ravens could easily be putting up more points than that if they had a, a, a better passing game. But they focus on that running game, and all that does is run down the clock. So at 29 points per game, I think the Ravens' offense is a lot better than people give them credit for. And I actually think the, the Buffalo offense, as compared to the Baltimore offense, uh, might be a little bit overrated. So my prediction for this game, I am predicting another upset here. I've got the Ravens final score 24 to 20. And I do believe that Lamar Jackson is finally going to get over the hump and make that AFC championship game. So moving on, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the New Orleans Saints. That is at 540 Central on Sunday. The Saints are minus three in this game. They are a slight favorite playing at home. So we always compare the defenses first in these games, but it is very difficult to do that in this game here because the Saints are number five in the league, only giving up 21 points per game. Tampa Bay is very close. They're number eight in the NFL, giving up 22 points per game. So very difficult comparison there. Offensively, again, both of these teams are close. Tampa Bay is number three. They're putting up 30 points a game, 30.8 to be exact. But New Orleans is number five. They're right there. They put up 30.1 points per game. So when, they're, when you're that evenly matched, you know, what's the next stat that I'm going to look at here? Well, we are going to go to the history of these two teams. Going back to week one, so the Saints won that first game 34-23, to and then looking at week nine, their second matchup, that was a blowout game, 38-3. to So the Saints won both of those games, and Drew Brees actually played 
in both of those games because, as we know, he had to sit for about four games, which is when uh, Taysom Hill had to take over. So the other thing I look at is the mental aspect of these games. So it's very difficult in any sport to beat the same team three times in one year. Now, it's a little bit different in the NBA because we all know that single games don't really matter in the NBA, but I would say a better example is in college basketball when you have two teams in the same conference. So, for example, you know, Duke is going to play North Carolina twice a year. If they ever have a third meeting in the NCAA championship tournament, you know, let's just say, for example, hypothetically, North Carolina won both games in the regular season. Very difficult for North Carolina to pull off that third game, be just because these two teams, they know each other so well. So it's the exact same thing here. Uh, you got Tampa Bay Bucks, New Orleans Saints, tough, tough divisional matchup. And so that's my comparison here. When you're talking about these tough divisional matchups in the NFL, it's it's very difficult, dare I say, impossible for one team to win all three of those games if they end up facing each other three times in a season. Because as we know, whereas in the NBA, those regular season games don't mean a whole lot. In the NFL, every single game is important because you only play 16 games in the regular season. Um, so the next thing I'm going to look at is just comparing these two quarterbacks. So we've talked about both of these guys falling off the cliff. All right. So I said on this show that it was my prediction. You know, I've heard a lot of people, they've been talking about Tom Brady falling off the cliff for years. I've been listening to this for what, the last three or four years, every single year, you know, they say that Tom Brady's going to fall off a cliff. And you know what? If you predict that every single year for 10 years, eventually you're going to be right. But you're going to be wrong the other nine times. So having said that, I'm going to take Brady in this game. Now, I did say at the beginning of the year that Drew Brees was going to fall off a cliff. And I just know that Tom Brady... You know, he's well known for taking care of his body, and that's why he's extended his career this long. And I'm not to say that Drew Brees doesn't take care of his body, but, you know, I just had this in my mind. I thought that Drew Brees was going to fall off a cliff this year. And to be quite honest, we all know he looked like crap. You, you guys know he looked god-awful in those first couple of games for the Saints this year. And he couldn't throw the deep ball. You know, his his passes looked a little bit wobbly. And when I saw that, I was like, okay, yeah, his career's over. But I think the thing that helped Drew Brees is the fact that he got to take four games off due to injury and he got to rest his arm because these guys are old guys. I mean, Tom Brady, Drew Brees, these guys have been around forever. They are old, okay? And that's that's not be that's not me trying to be mean. I'm just stating the facts. They're old as heck right now. And so with Drew Brees, I saw him in those first couple of games this year, and I thought, okay, yeah, my prediction is correct. He's done. But I think the fact that he got to take those four games off due to an injury, I think that helped him to actually have a little bit more left in the tank as we approached the end of the season. And now that we're in the playoffs, I think he has a well-rested arm. And so I'm not going to write off Drew Brees in this game. I'm very impressed by how Drew Brees responded this season. Uh, but when I look at Tom Brady, all right, just to throw out a couple of things here, right? So Tom Brady eats avocado ice cream, all right? So very healthy eater, takes care of his body. And the other thing about Tom Brady is this guy chugs a beer 
faster than the host of this show, which is very difficult to do. Now, all kidding aside, it, it's very tough to pick this game, and it, it's very tough to compare these two quarterbacks at this stage of their career because they're both old. Nobody knows what's going to happen from game to game. Tom Brady looks great. You know, Drew, Drew Brees looks okay. Uh, I did say from the very beginning that uh, TB12, a.k.a. Tom Brady, would lead the Bucks to the Super Bowl. So that was my prediction from the very beginning. And it's too late to change my mind now. So in this game, give me the Bucks, 31 to 27, which means that first three games that I predicted, I have predicted three upsets. Moving on, we've got the Browns at the Kansas City Chiefs. Chiefs are minus 10. This game will kick off tomorrow at 2.05 p.m. Central. Big question for me, will JG pick all four games to be upsets? Well, we have to point out the fact that the first three games that I just predicted for you guys, let's be honest, those are not huge upsets, okay? All six of those teams are very close, and any team could win any of those three games. So, yeah, technically I did pick three upsets, but I don't really consider them upsets because all, all those teams are close. But I did pick three upsets. So, let's break it down. Browns at the Chiefs. Chiefs have been trending in the wrong direction defensively, which is a problem for me. As you guys know, I look at defense first. So the Chiefs were a top seven defense. A lot of you guys don't know this. They were top seven for most of the season in terms of points per game, but they, they dropped down at the end. They ended up number 10, the 10th best defense in the NFL, giving up 22.6 points per game. So that's still not bad to be the 10th best defense in the NFL, but... I always go back to the fact that Steve Spagnolo and his defenses historically always perform better in the playoffs. And so the, the same thing happened last year. I mean, you look at the Chiefs early in the season, everybody was trashing that defense. They're, they were all getting scared. And what's, what's going to happen to the Chiefs? We're not going to do anything this year. And what happened? Well, Spagnolo pulled a few things out of his bag of tricks, and that defense stepped up in crunch time. So not worried about the defense here. I still believe that uh, Spagnolo is going to save the best for last, as he usually does in the playoffs. Looking at the other side, Cleveland Browns, I do have a problem with their defense. They are ranked 21st. In the NFL, they give up 26.2 points per game. That is a huge problem, guys, considering that their game plan from week to week is to run the ball and milk the clock. We talked about that with the Ravens. If all you do is run the ball and try to milk the clock, you should have a pretty good defense as far as points per game by the end of the season. So the Browns, um, looking at that game plan that they've had all season, um, being 21st in defense, that is not a good thing. And they should not be giving up that many points per game based on their game plan. So the reason I say that's a huge problem here is because they are facing a Chiefs offense that is number six in the NFL in scoring. Chiefs are putting up 29.6 points per game. They are actually number one in the NFL offensively in terms of yards. The Chiefs put up 415 yards per game. So looking at the Browns offense, you know, they're 14th in the league. So that's kind of mediocre. They only put up 25 points per game. And having said all that, there's no reason for this to be a close game, guys. This should be a total annihilation. The Chiefs should win this game by, like, what, 20, 25 points. But I am going to give the Browns 
the benefit of the doubt here because of that strong running game. And so I do believe the Browns are going to cover here. Chiefs are favored by minus 10. So if you guys want to bet this game, I would definitely take the Browns to cover. However, I do have a final score of 40 to 31 Chiefs. So again, guys, give me your thoughts on Twitter. You can hit me up at Sports Buffoons and let me know if you agree with those predictions. I know the rest of the clan, they had very different opinions on Wednesday when they were making their picks, but I want to hear from you guys because it should be a very fun weekend in the uh, divisional round of the NFL playoffs. And with that, we are going to bring this show to a close, guys. I appreciate you all for joining, and I will see you guys on the next one. This is JG. I am out.